There have been many different releases of macOS, some great and some not so great. The operating system has also been through many different changes over the years, that being under the hood or right on the surface such as the very design of the OS itself. But today, we will be talking about just one of the major releases from 2013 and that's the beautiful Mac OS 10.9 Mavericks, or also known as Mac OS 10 back in the day. So stick around because it's going to be a pretty fun video as I dive into this operating system to compare it to modern stuff and to see how useful it is today. So enjoy and hope you stick around. Now right off the bat, this might be something that decides if you even love old macOS or dislike it in the first place, but I've always regarded Mavericks as my favorite version of macOS due to its extreme reliability and as you can most likely assume, yes, it's great design. Now, skimorphism, aka the 3D non-flat look of modern OS's, might be an acquired taste, but I absolutely love it. I really love it. It's also one of the reasons why I love Windows 7's Arrow theme, and also Vista I guess. It's just that happy glossy look. And I'm not out here to fully bash modern Mac OS because as you can see here, take a look. It's actually starting to get pretty good looking with modern Mac OS with its transparency. But overall, that shiny bottom dock, the 3D exit buttons, and just the overall flair of the OS before they switched to Yosemite, which completely ditched all that. It's just something I love. I might just be weird for enjoying that, but hopefully fans of older macOS can also relate. And even the fans of w Arrow theme on Windows. Similar look, you know, with the 3D look. Overall, love it. Now if you know anything about app support when it comes to Apple products, Apple itself, in the general community, is qu very quick to update the OS to the latest version, that be it through official means or the open core patcher. So basically, very little people continue to run these older OS's for long, or I guess they can just upgrade the whole system. Still, either way, compared to Windows, the Apple update cycle is quite fast, and thus most apps drop support for older OS's very quickly, and that's when the community steps in. So in this case, we're running Chromium Legacy, which is a third party thing made by somebody on GitHub, full credit to them, links in the description if you want to download it. And basically, it's an almost fully up-to-date version of Chromium, meaning, well, it's a fully up-to-date browser. So whatever you do in your current browser, you can easily do here. 1080p YouTube, web version of Discord, email, yeah, it's just a modern browser. Pretty much fully up-to-date, I'm pretty sure it's 121, I'll put it up on screen if I'm wrong though. And overall, it allows Mavericks to continue to web browse for hopefully years to come. So, pretty impressive stuff, 10 out of 10, would recommend. Love it. Next up, gaming. And you know I had to do it because I do this test for any video I do. And as for gaming, how does it do? Well, if you're a fan of older games, emulation and all that, you'll have a fun time, but nothing online is really going to work these days. Now Minecraft, a modded Minecraft that is, works beautifully as you can see, even while recording. Um, Roblox sadly does not work, although it ended support back in 2019, as you can see right here. Here's actually one of the last ever screenshots of Roblox on a Maverick system, pretty cool. But yeah, for Roblox you have to use an old version of Studio, which you can still build if you want. Um, but other than that, it's really going to be the super simple games, like stuff on itch.io, which is like indie games and all that, um, old versions of Plants vs Zombies, Geometry Dash. So you can certainly get by with a lot of games, even newer games that are indie-wise, but nothing's going to be online. Steam ended support, Roblox ended support, official Minecraft ended support, so yeah. Kind of a down spot, but you can certainly still find gems here and there. Now in regards to communication apps, in particular Discord, there's two main ways you can run Discord. Of course, with that beautiful Chromium browser, you have full access to everything that Discord for web can do, which is official. No chance of getting banned at all, because it's just official Discord for web. And it can do calling, it can do literally anything. There's also, though, an official client built by DOSDude1, which is a phenomenal client in my opinion, which is getting more features, I assume. And 
This one might be a bit iffy for some people because it runs tremendously faster. Not that the Chromium one is slow at all, but still, it's purpose-built, so it's going to be faster. But it's also a third-party client, so some people are iffy on that if they'll get banned. It's technically against TOS, so my opinion is if you run with the third-party client, just use an alt account. But it's up to you. Both methods work beautifully through the browser, fully featured, or through the third-party client. You can keep in touch with your friends. You can call, at least through the Chromium one. And overall, pretty good. Next up, word processing and productivity and stuff like that. In this case, for the use of LibreOffice, but you could just as easily find a version of uh, Microsoft Word 2011. Because honestly, I think Word doesn't change too much over time. It's the word processing app at the end, so I don't really think you need a later version, but that's just my opinion. Overall though, this version of LibreOffice from 2017 still works flawlessly for anything you need word processing wise, printing labels, and it also has other stuff built in, as you saw as it started up off to the side, on the left side near the bottom. It's not just a word processor, Libri is pretty powerful overall. But if you don't need Libri, you can also use Chromium once again for like Google Word or Docs and everything, because honestly the web browser is really powerful for productivity as well. But you can never go wrong with good old LibreOffice. Overall, productivity, maybe not 10 out of 10, but I'd say a good 7 out of 10. Maybe 6 out of 10, but still not bad. Overall, for the conclusion of running OS Mavericks in 2025, it's been a pretty reliable experience in my opinion, especially with Chromium. Chromium has helped a lot. If it wasn't for Chromium and an up-to-date browser, it honestly probably would be completely useless. But Chromium, along with the fun indie games, Minecraft, and other productivity stuff, it's kept the OS going, as I would say. Although, should you be running Mavericks in 2025? Obviously not, probably not. It's more of a side computer type of thing. If you have a side computer, throw it onto that type of computer. But it's not really for the main computer because lack of security updates and whatnot. But I have been presently surprised about how it's run so far. And it's been a really fun experience. Honestly, kind of daily driving it. I know I said that you shouldn't, but I kind of broke that rule and I kind of have been daily driving it. And it's been pretty fun. Although, this MacBook will probably now go on to the latest version via Open Core Patcher, so stick around for that to see how the massive jump in OS version fares for the system. Hope you've enjoyed. It's been a really fun video. I love the look of Mavericks, so it's fun to always play with it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and if you've made it this far, peace.